Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. It's Thursday, October 15th, 2020. My name's Jennifer Cotton, and welcome. Thank you for watching my video. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas. And what that means is I teach people how to make cards, gift packages, scrapbook pages, home decor items, and more with stamps, ink, paper, tools, accessories, and so on. Um, as you come on, say hi, and I will enter you to win uh, the cards I'm going to make today. Hey, Darla, good morning. I see lots of people jumping on, so say hi as you come on. Hey, Karen. Oh, goodness, they're going by too fast. <laughs> um, Sherry. And Susan. Um, okay, sorry. Hey, Susan. <laughs> hey, Pam. Hey, Linda in Mansfield. Awesome. Hey, Sherry. Good morning, Pat. Okay, so lots of you guys here. Good morning. Thank you. So definitely say hi as you come on so you can have a chance to win the three cards I'm going to make today. Even if you're watching replay, by the way, say hi. Thanks for sharing, Susan and Pat. And then if you share the video, you'll be entered again. So type in that you shared. That way, um, thank you, Landa. Good morning. That way um, I will know you shared it because Facebook usually doesn't tell me. And <clears throat> uh, I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 19 years now. So I do this as a full-time job. So when you share the video and even when you click like or make a comment that all helps me in my business so thank you very much i appreciate it and so a small thank you is entering you to win the cards thanks for sharing cindy hello hey susan um kelly good morning great makeup oh thanks pat um i actually there's a feature in iPhones when you do a Facebook live that lightens everything up and it is not working right now. So I'm not happy with the look, but thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to be making three cards for you guys today using lots of stuff from the holiday catalog. Um, usually I use one suite of products, but I'm going to use different stuff today. So you'll see it when I show it. Hey, Charlotte, good morning. And, uh, thanks for sharing Susan. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so <clears throat> this weekend is my class weekend. I call it club weekend. That's just in my head what it is. But what it really is is every month I offer four classes that anyone can take all over the U.S. because they're offered to go. And um, it's a little, <laughs> oh, sorry, a little lower. I feel like I'm like, at the bottom of the screen. Anyway, um, card class, scrapbook class, stamp a stack class, and a sampler class. So anyone can take those all over the U.S. live or to go. Um, so they are offered live. It's limited seating available. Hey, Sherry. Thanks for sharing. Hey, Terry. Good morning. So you have to RSVP separately for the live just to reserve your time slot. You know, we have all kinds of COVID rules at my house. <laughs> Um, it's offered to go where you just use your own stamps and ink at home. We cut, die cut, punch everything we can for you. You stamp and assemble. Or for my local customers, a second option besides live is picking up a tub of supplies. Ignore the paper on top of this. That's what I'm going to make today. Um, where all the ink pads, tools, stamps, all that stuff is inside the tub and you can, you're allowed to take it home for 24 hours. So that's three options to go only live or tub for these four classes. Um, so I'm going to be talking about three of them when I make my projects today. So I won't go into a lot of detail. I believe all of them have at least one class packet left. So just check with me if you would like one. Um, but it's card class as I said, scrapbook class, sampler class, and stamp a stack class. So sampler is the one I'm not really mentioning during the video, but this is my sampler class this month. I love it. I, Landa is my assistant, and she has cut 
or and is cutting stamp a stack and card class for you and she's so she's over there die cutting like crazy especially for stamp a stack um, but I did this one so yesterday I spent all day die cutting all this stuff <laughs> it's pre die cut for you it's ready to go as well as anything else that you don't have to stamp first it's done for you and then I'm gonna package it up after this video um, so it will be bagged up in the order pictured here you'll get a PDF tutorial you will stamp and assemble so it's an awesome class um, I have two or three extras available again live to go um, tub all those options are available the cla live class is Saturday I don't remember if I said that exactly but it is Saturday and there's different time slots available um, that one's $28 it includes $20 in merchandise like I said we cut everything for you um, so then I have my Wonder of the Season 20 Cards class coming up, so make sure you check out the details on that. 20 cards, it's $40, and it includes a $38 value in product. Hey, Ruth, good morning. So it's a great deal. Everything will be cut, punched, etc. Thank you, Pat, for your compliment. <laughs> um, so you should check out that class oh, and by the way for all of these events if you just join my email mailing list then you will get notified you'll get the links to sign up everything but if you're not on it and you want a link um, just contact me email me Facebook message me whatever and I can send you that link to sign up thank you Susan um, retreat in a box your last chance to sign up for this is Sunday um, I just sent out an email this morning for the optional class I'm doing. Uh, yes, it went out this morning because I really love this class. It is a Christmas gift class. Um, it's $45 and it includes over $35 in merchandise, the value. Uh, I don't have my, the, where I did my math, but it's over, it's close to 38 at least value in product for $45. Now we are going to cut, die cut, punch so much stuff for you for this class because the three cards are fancy folds so there's going to be we're going to be, be scoring for you etc you still cut your designer paper but you'll have a pdf tutorial like all of my classes so all three cards are fancy folds all three gift card holders are fancy folds um so here's where your gift card goes um gift card holder isn't this adorable and then this one you can untie it or slide the ribbon off and there's a gift card holder in there so three gift card holders three cards three awesome gift tags you can see how big they are this one's as big as my face <laughs> um, three awesome gift tags and then you're also gonna make one of these so sign up for that class by Sunday um, you'll need two stamp sets to to make those projects wrapped in Christmas and warm hugs I believe is what they're called warm hugs and wrapped in Christmas yes hey Carol good morning thanks for sharing um oh thank you Susan yeah my uh I think my comments were not scrolling up Okay, so there's that class. Then there's the retreat in a box, which is $75. That includes shipping. And that is 17 projects. Cut, ready, emboss, stamp, blah, blah, blah. Not stamped, <laughs> but everything but stamping. Um, and that's because of a Stampin' Up! rule, by the way. We're not allowed to stamp and send. So you're going to make two um, paper pumpkin boxes in this class. You're going to get over... $50 in merchandise, including extra paper pumpkin boxes, extra note cards, and then a bunch of other stuff, designer papers and all that. But you're going to make a couple of Halloween. So this will be mailed next week. So you get it before Halloween. And then everything else is Christmas and fall. That's a fancy fold card. That's another fancy fold card. Of course, we'll die cut this for you and all that. So fall, Christmas, Halloween. I don't remember if I said it correctly. You're going to make two of each of our little gift tags so cute um, you're gonna make a full sampler we're gonna emboss and cut and all that for you and you're gonna make two 12 by 12 scrapbook pages so 
sign up, sign up. <laughs> Sunday's the deadline. Um, okay. Actually, I need to move these out of my way as well for the stamping portion. Um, Stampin' Up Specials, do not forget, designer papers on sale. This is um, a great sale. We do, a we've been doing, Stampin' Up, I should say, has been doing a designer paper sale for several years now at this time of year. But it's usually buy three, you get one free. This year, it's better to me, just 15% off select designs. So there's uh, six, 15 papers to choose from, and they're on a flyer here. There's a link. Do I have a link to the flyer? Let me write myself a note. Um, I'm going to add that in the video description. Link to, <clears throat> to sale flyer. Because I don't think I had that before. <clears throat> but of course, it's on my... You could click shop now. You'll see the sale. If you go to my blog, you'll find a link to the flyer and all that stuff. And of course, in my emails. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... They're all 15% off. All of them are $9.78 except for the In Good Taste, which is cost more, so it is discounted to $17.85. And they've picked really good papers. Hey, Shirley, good morning. Um, and I'm going to use a couple of them today. So check that out. Get it. That's only in October, the sale. And then I showed these last time, but these are some products that you can start ordering November 3rd as a customer. Quite curvy, and the curvy dies. This is a sneak peek coming out in our January to June mini catalog. Thanks for sharing, Shirley. Hey, Barbara. So it's a sneak peek, but we get to order it early in November. But if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you get to order it today, which of course I did. And anyway... I was going to say something else we can order, but that's a special situation. Um, and then they're also coming out November 3rd is the limited edition Curvy Christmas stamp set. And the limited edition classic Christmas designer paper. And I showed these in, you know, like much more detail in the last Facebook Live. But there's four designs of this paper and three colors that it comes in. And I said that, I think I called that holly last time, but it's um, mistletoe. <laughs> but in my head, I said mistletoe, so that was embarrassing. But of course, someone else had to tell me that's what it was called. So those are the four designs, and then your three colors are cherry cobbler, shaded spruce, and um, chrome cake. So this will be, you can buy it now if you're a demonstrator. Or it'll be, be available November 3rd while supplies last. It's And it's 6x6, six six, obviously. Um, so, you should just be a demonstrator. Half the people watching this video are. <laughs> and um, that just means that, A, you buy a kit for $99 and you get to pick $125 of anything you want. Including that Kirby stuff, designer paper on sale, anything we sell, you can buy with your $125. And then you get a discount on anything you purchase for at least your next full quarter. So in this case, till the end of March, which will cover our new mini catalog, celebration, and um, sneak peeks of that stuff, ordering early. You get to see stuff early. You get catalogs early. Lots of perks, but no requirements. So if you don't meet, you know, dead, uh, not deadlines, but um, sales requirements, nothing bad happens. You just drop out. And you can buy the kit again later if you want. So it's a win-win, no obligation kind of situation. Um, so any questions on any of this stuff I'm talking about? My, my events, sales, how to purchase, just let me know. Every month I do have an online ordering special. And so I'm going to show you last month's special. Hey Arlene, good morning. And let's see... I got Barbara there. Um, so, so every month it's the same special. Place a minimum twenty-five dollar online order with our monthly, with my monthly host code, which you'll see when I point the camera down. That's a little code that you enter, by the way, when you're, you see the your total tax shipping. Below that is add a coupon code. Skip that. Below that is add a host code. You click the plus and you type in the numbers and letters or copy and paste. 
Um, anyway, what you receive if your order is 25 or more with the host code is a free class packet to make four cards. Just like everything else I told you. It's cut, punched, die cut, embossed, ready for you to just add your stamps and assemble. I always tell you which stamp set we're going to be using ahead of time. So this month it's Poinsettia Petals. Love it. So of course, and I haven't designed them yet, but of course, whatever possible that we use um, from these dies will pre-do for you and whatever we can't like if I'm gonna say stamp this and then cut die cut it out you can hand cut it out if needed hey Angela good morning so anyway these are the cards from last month's special so as you can see lots of cool stuff used we use the designer papers we use specialty papers all that and you get a PDF tutorial to complete your cards with all that'll be die cut for you and then but wait, there's more. If your online order is $50 or more, you also get a free um, full accessory. So this month it was the snowflake sequins that you got with your uh, as a gift, basically, for placing that online order. So you get the card kit and the accessory if it's 50 or more. And wait, if it's 150 or more, don't use my host code because then Stampin' Up! will give you a minimum of $15 more in free stuff when you're ordering. You'll close that out and then I'll still send you my two gifts. So hopefully that makes sense. Linda will be watching quietly. Hubby is still sleeping. <laughs> awesome. Yes, there's always replay, which is awesome. And there's uh, uh, headphones. <laughs> Try that if you hadn't thought of that. Um, Paper Pumpkin is our Stampin' Up's monthly craft kit in the mail. So we have a flyer for this month's November's Paper Pumpkin. And I don't know how well you can see that translate on the screen, but we have an actual sneak peek of the stamp set. That's a little gingerbread house. There's a chimney. You can kind of see, make out the house. This is obviously a die cut element that comes in the kit of a front of a house. And then you can see these little peppermint embellishments, which I'm assuming are sticky backed. So that's our sneak peek. But what we know about this kit is that it's going to make 15 gift card holders. Yay. And of course, with that size, a gift card holder, you could convert it into a full-size card um, or a gift tag. I'm sure you can convert it into lots of stuff. So, but your kit, this is last month's kit. It's going to include a stamp set. Hey, Pat. Hey, Jackie. Um... And the stamp set is exclusive. You can't buy it anywhere else. Do I have my joy? No, I haven't got that one yet. Anyway, you're, this is the month before. So this is September's kit. Um, you're going to get an exclusive stamp set. And then all the stuff you need to make whatever Stampin' Up! says the project is. So, and an ink. So, we'll get, I'm sure, pre-made gift card holders with envelopes. It'll make 15. You'll get whatever accessories. You always get adhesive, like this one has glue dots and Stampin' Dimensionals inside this baggie. Um, and it's awesome. And keep in mind, these kits make great gifts for pretty much anybody because they're all inclusive. Um, you don't, the only thing you might need to add is scissors. And then um, when you first time subscribe, you get a clear block with it. Um, but other than that, everything is included. So great gifts for kids, you know, um, people who are, you know, like maybe in a nursing home or assisted living, friends, family. It's a great project to do together with any of those people I just named. Um, and when you subscribe, you can subscribe to it for $22 a month. Hey, Rhonda. Thanks for sharing. Hey, Pam. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda. Um, when you subscribe, you can also go in every single month to your account and put it on hold, cancel it, or change the number of subscriptions you get. So you can say this month I want two kits or three kits or I get five. Um, some for a, one of my customers who prefers to order that way, some for me and some to sell. But as a, as you you guys, um, you may want to get extras to give as gifts, to share with other people, etc. And then you can go back the next month and change, change it back to one or whatever. But it's $22 plus tax only. That includes shipping for your stamp set, instructions, all the supplies, the accessories, everything. It's 
a really good deal. Um, the deadline is the 10th of each month, so sign up by November 10th for this month's kit. And you can also go to my website and pre purchase a prepaid version where you don't want to subscribe, you don't want to get it every month, but you do want one month's worth or three, six, or 12 months. So there's all those options. Um, let me see if there's anything else. What they, oh, there's a little video, like a very short little promotional video for it, which I'll put a link for. And in the video, they say there's um, peppermint candy embellishments and curly rooftop designs included in the kit. So it sounds really cute. And by the way, Paper Pumpkin can be, like technically it's always while supplies last. So there's always that small chance it could sell out. So keep that in mind. If you know you want it, make sure you subscribe as soon as possible or purchase and activate as soon as possible. So any questions on any of that, let me know. I'm gonna turn the camera down now so we can get started stamping. And um, hopefully this won't take me too long um, to get it positioned properly. Here we go. My little holder is a little loose. I need to re-tighten. Okay, not too bad. Get, try to get centered there. I'll see how that goes. Okay, so this first card I'm gonna show you. I, by the way, in the last two Facebook Lives, I've shown projects that are coming up this weekend in my card class and my stampa stack. So today I'm showing you a couple of more projects that I didn't show yet. So this first one is from my card class. Landa has the cards that we're making in card class. Besides this, well, anyway, this is a duplicate, but she has them. So long story short, I can't show those again right now. However, um, you can just go back and watch that video from one, I think that was last week, but it's last week or the week before, um, to see the other three. And I think I only have one of these packets left. Anyway, so this will be one of the cards they are making in class. Now for them, when you buy this packet from me, it's cut and ready to go. But I did want to show you how to make this card today. So I am going to do some cutting on here. Hopefully that makes sense. But it will be pre-done in the class. So we have our Whisper White card base, five and a half by eight and a half. And then the other pieces we have here, Mossy Meadow, two and three-fourths by three and three-fourths, real red, two and a half, three and a half, and then a scrap of Whisper White, so it looks bigger, but I'm gonna stamp and die cut from that. And then two strips of Heartwarming Hugs designer paper. This designer paper is 15% off till the end of October, and they are both one inch by five and a fourth. So two of those. The other things you're gonna need, which this will be in their packet just like this, is a, a piece of our red braided linen trim and five ri red rhinestones. So that part will be as shown here, but and this stuff will be that way, but this one will be pre-cut for you. So let me show you what I'm gonna do to, to this piece. First, I'm gonna fold it in half with my bone folder. So this is what you'll do for any of your cards. You, I like to align it on the table, the two corners, and rest it against my thumbnail. Once those are aligned, pinch it only one time, and then I use my bone folder to press really firmly and make that nice crease. The bone folder makes it so that the inside is not all wrinkled up, which for whatever reason, when you use your finger, the inside is all wrinkled up. So that's what the bone folder's for. After we fold it in half, I'm gonna grab my paper cutter, which of course I set all the stuff that I was showing you guys today on top of. <laughs> um, and I do like, I use my paper cutter backwards or sideways. Then most people use it this direction or this one, but I use it this way. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, you fold it in half first. That's important. So then you don't have to score it. Of course you can score it if you prefer. And then I'm gonna cut three inches off. So I'm gonna go up to the three inch mark and cut. 
And this is just my version of this card, by the way. So you can do different widths for your own cards. And then this piece here, I'm going to cut down to one and a fourth inches. And I want to keep the one and a fourth. It's hard to see this because I'm so far away from the cutter. I'm going to keep the one and a fourth part for this card. This is a scrap now that you can use for whatever. So, these are the pieces I need for the card. And this is what will be in your packet. So your packet for this card will basically be all of this inside the envelope with the embellishments. Okay, so of course when you're at live class, stamp and sign your name on the back first in case you mess up. You haven't glued everything down and you have to start all over again. Um, so stamp and sign your name on the back, handmade by, made with love, whatever. And then for the stamping on this card, we're going to stamp two things. And this is another, you want to do this first in case you mess up. Because basically once, if you've glued everything down and you mess up, you have to replace everything. If you haven't glued anything down and you mess up, you just have to replace one piece of paper. Um, so here are the stamps I'm gonna be using. This is my cl card class tub, which like I said, if you're local, you can register for a time, date, and well, it's, the time is the same, but register for a date for yourself to pick it up. Um, this is what it looks like exactly. This is the tub. So there's a reminder in there about when to return it and to please pack it back the way it is now. Your inks usually are on one side. There is a stampin' spot in there. These sticky notes are, um, yeah, I'm gonna use a sticky note. I'm just trying to remember what I used it for when I put it together. They only need one die because everything else is pre-done for them, so there's a die. Dimensionals, silicone craft sheet, glue dots. There's a note that there are going to be two seasons greeting stamps, one in mossy meadow and one in red. So I'm borrowing Landa's stamp, which she gave it to me. I just haven't put it on here yet. So there'll be two stamps that say seasons greetings, but one needs to be stamped in one color, one in the other. So hopefully you can see the organization here. Um, there's a marker to sign your name on the back. There's a take your pick tool for the rhinestones. It's, and everything's labeled with the color. Okay, so what I need though for this card is I need the this tree. And when you're at home doing this, you can just take everything out and put it on your table and then grab what you need for each card. Um, and I need the red season's greetings. And the, ooh, excuse me, those two tree images. Um, there's a couple of handmade by stamps there as well for them to use. But the rest of those stamps I used um, on that other card, I mean on the other three cards I made the other day. And then for this card, I need Real Red, Pear Pizzazz, and Mossy Meadow. Okay, so we're going to stamp the tree right here. Simple. We want to do the outline first in Mossy Meadow. So I'm just going to tap this Mossy Meadow stamping spot all over. A lot of times you'll see I have to use old ink pads because I use, I have so many classes going at one time that I have to use multiples of each color, if that makes sense. So my other pair of pizzazz pad is somewhere else. This doesn't have to be perfectly centered because it's um, um, going to be die cut out. And, but just as a reminder, if your table is not super firm like mine, then you want to grab your Stampin' Pierce mat or some kind of cushiony thing to put under the cardstock when you stamp with photopolymer stamps. So if you don't get a good image with photopolymer, that's probably the issue is the surface under your table. Okay, next... I'm going to add the detail, I mean the solid part in Air Possess. So on these ink pads, of course, don't press too hard. Nice and gentle. I'm going to hopefully be able to see what I'm doing here. It does align really well, but it helps if you can be right on top of it. 
Anyway, don't press hard on our ink pads, but you can press a lot. Just move the stamp around to multiple areas multiple times gently so you don't get ink everywhere. And then I'm going to die cut that out, but I'll go ahead and stamp my greeting while we're here. I don't really need this for that part. What I do need is this is going to go on bottom, and this is going to go on the side. And I'm going to use those as a visual to tell me where to stamp my greeting right here in the center. And so, uh, real red. So use the one that says red if you're taking my class. The other one will be labeled with the other color. And then you just want to center it right there. Okay. Beautiful. Let's see how y'all are doing. Thank you for sharing. Good morning, Debbie. Thanks for sharing, Terry. <laughs> Going to be a cute fold card. Thank you. Uh oh, Terry, you froze. Um. Oh, Terry, I didn't even say the stamp set. Um. Let me grab the box. Thank you for asking that question. I didn't think about it because of how I have it packed up for club. So the stamp set is called In the Pines, and we're using the dies that coordinate with that as well. I think they're called wood. I forget the name, but the pines dies that go with it. Thank you for asking that. Good question. In the pines. And at my card class, every card will use the same um, stamp set so that people don't have to purchase. You know, if you take the class from me to go especially, then you don't have to purchase five stamp sets to be able to complete all four cards, which is the old way. I used to do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to die cut this out next. Again, if you take it at home and you don't have the dies, you hand cut that out. I've got my trusty uh, stampin' cut and emboss machine. And I have my magnetic platform on here. I have learned a little trick. Um, these magnetic plates curl up really bad. I don't know if you can see that on the edge right there in the camera, but I've learned from another demonstrator that you can kind of, you can't make it perfect, but you can bend it like this and try to curl the corners down with your hands um, to get it to go back a little bit flat. And so I was die cutting, as you can see on here, lots of stuff for my sampler and scrapbook classes over the last couple of days. You can see the colors of paper. Um, and so in after I would do several cuts, I would just take it off and literally put it under my arm, you know, and hold it there while I would do a few things and then put it back on here. So that has been helping, just FYI. Now I curled it up the other way. Um, so anyway, it's magnetic. All the whole thing is magnetic, which is cool. Clear cutting pad on top so your dies don't jump around like they did with our old one because that one just had magnets in certain spots. Die cut that out. And there you go. So. A little heavy. I don't know how many pounds it weighs, but okay. So we're ready to assemble. Of course, you get a clear envelope with my classes. Most classes come with clear. The retreat. I think we're doing white envelopes for that. Those cards and the class, I believe. Either way, you'll get an envelope. Okay, so adhesive. So these strips of heartwarming hugs designer paper are going to go on the. Uh -oh this strip and this strip and by the way I think this call card is called a split front but I don't really know I just know I've seen them forever and I've never made one they're so easy you make this whatever width you want you make the bottom whatever width you want and you make the opening whatever width you want <laughs> um, and then you design something around it and you'll see how extremely simple it is to put together um, designer paper makes an easy decoration for the top and bottom, but you can do other stuff as well. It can be a lot more elaborate than mine is also. So we have that part. 
let me put these together. Let's see if you guys have any questions. I've heard that if you set the machine on top of it when you're not using it, it flattens it back out. Oh, put the entire machine on top of the magnetic plate, Terry? I mean, Pam? It would be too thick to run through the machine folded in half, Terry, for sure. Too thick. And that might crack it in half in the middle. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, however, yeah, you cannot do that. But um, I haven't heard of that other tip of setting the entire machine down on top of this. But I will say that I've been, before I got that other tip about bending it, I've been storing mine in my machine with it rolled up. And that has not helped, just FYI. Um, now, I use mine a lot. You know, Landa and I are cutting hundreds, if not thousands, monthly. So, it's going to get a lot more use. But that ha this little tip that I just started yesterday, by the way, has been helping. So, there we go. Okay, I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on my tree. I've cut some in half here. Um, you don't have to cut them in half, but I like to so they go further. So that part's up to you. You can put full ones. You can put more. You can even put less. And just put that tree on there. Then we'll add our little rhinestones. Slide it over like that. I like to use the take your pick tool with the pointed end. Put your finger on top of the rhinestone so that it doesn't fly across the room. And you lose it or it hits your friend in the face or something. So just hold it in place there. And I'm putting my five red rhinestones on here. Okay. And then I'm going to tie my red braided linen trim in a bunny ear bow. So two bunny ears. Lots of space in between. Both of the, uh, sorry, all of my fingers are pointing at me. So nothing is twisted away from me. And then you just cross your right over your left and push that same right one loop down into the bunny ear, bunny hole. And then uh, fix it because it won't look right at first. Make a cute little bow. And then I will trim that down. And I actually, one of the other cards we're making for card class has a bow on top of the tree. But I liked this one better here on the bottom of the tree. So that's where I put it. And I'll use a mini glue dot for that. So cute. So now we're ready to finish putting this together. And this is where I, uh, I think this is where I used the sticky notes. I'm honestly, yeah. So I used the sticky note. You basically want this one down at the bottom. You can stack it like when you're stacking something. You want it exactly all the way to the bottom. And you want this down flat. So I used the sticky note to hold that in place for me. That's what these are for if you're taking my class live. <laughs> Um, I have not typed instructions yet. That's on my list to do today as well. So it's going to be a very busy next two days because I also have to clean my house because, you know, y'all are, there's going to be people here. So I'm just putting Stampin' Dimensionals at the top and bottom where I know it'll touch these two parts. You could also do this flat, like without dimensionals. This one's really tiny. So I think I'll add one more. And then I'll just balance it out at the bottom with one more. I'm just going to rip this off from the edge. Okay. I think I only did two on my first one, but whichever. It's fine. There should be dimensionals in this box. You know what? There are not. I need to add dimensionals to my tub. I need to write myself a note, which I'm going to write on this sticky note. And put it in there when I'm done. Okay, so I peeled everything off, and then you just center it. You know, 
in that little area. Really look at the top and bottom. That's where I kept sort of messing up is not paying attention to kind of even spacing top and bottom there. And now you have a really fun fold card. Like I said, I think it's called split front, something like that, split opening. Um, I'm not 100% sure, like I said, on the name because I didn't look it up by name. And I just made up my own instructions. Thank you, Terry. The sticky note came out of, you know, how you learn stuff because you're desperate. I couldn't hold, I kept trying to hold it and you really need two hands to do this. And I was getting frustrated and that's when I was like, let me see if I can tape this down. There's my other card. Don't forget, if y'all just joined or whatever, if you didn't hear this the first time, comment on the video so you can be entered to win the cards I'm going to make today. And um, so you'll win one of these plus one of the other two I'm going to make. That was within the pines. I'm going to put everything back. Oh, I do have dimensionals in there. Look. Never mind. Note. Okay. So there we go. And then, of course, at class or at home, you put it in your clear envelope. So I'll do it this way. And don't forget, you can mail these envelopes. I put a piece of printer paper in the back, a fourth of a sheet with where I've written to and from. Then I seal it and put the postage stamp on the outside. And it goes through the mail like that. This also is, of course, great when you're presenting a gift in person to someone. But... Uh, just make sure you check with your post office of how much postage they want for that. Okay, so that was card class tub and one of our last card class projects. The next one is from the stamp -a stack and by the way, oops, these are the three cards I showed on, I think, two weeks ago. And I did decide to use these for my all for my stamp -a stack class. So these are three of the stamp -a stack cards and we have two or three extra packets of this one. Um, of this pack class. So anyway, I've already made these on Facebook. I just wanted to, I guess, remind you. But now I'm going to show you the fourth one and also give you some, just whatever, a little more info about stamp -a stack So... Uh, but I saw Terry's question, so let me grab the catalog. She says, where do you get the hand-stamped buy stamp? I always forget the name of it, but I think it's at the very back of the stamps. And if anyone thinks of it while I'm looking, throw it out there for me. Um, but we have a stamp set in our catalog that has several of them. Make a difference. I think that's what it's called. Let me look up make a difference. And that's what I use. I actually own two of them because I do so many classes at the same time where I can have them at, you know, where everybody can use one. It's on page 139. And it's really a good set, like, for other stuff as well. It has an alphabet, uh, upper and lower case. It has, like, your double letters, two L's, two G's, etc. All these numbers, other letters, little image. But then all these images here, people may not notice, there are several. Homemade by, hand stamped by, handcrafted just for you, made with love. And this one also has the copyright Stampin' Up stamp in it, which is what you need if you're going to sell your stamps using Stampin' Up images. I mean, sell your, not stamps, your cards and projects you make. Um, that's our angel policy. You have to Put Stampin' Up's copyright on it, and it's right there. Then there's other fun stuff delivered to, created by, from the desk of, to, from, www. and then .com. So lots of cool stamps in this stamp set, as well as these images here. Even an at sign. Okay, so make a difference. That's the one I use, um, Terry. Okay, so for... Uh, blah, 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 stamp a stack class you get product with the fee it's $30 and it includes $20 in merchandise 
when it in, when any of those kind of classes including the sampler include designer paper you cut your own we give you a pdf tutorial with all the measurements so this is one sheet of the tis the season designer paper you get a full pack in this class but you'll use that on your card and it i don't know what i'm trying to say but i'm going to of course in your pdf give you the measurements to cut but they are Darn it. I'm going to have to measure mine. I thought I had a sticky note. One and three fourths by five. So I'm going to actually, because you would be making three of these cards, it's a stack. So you make three of each design. So I would cut it at five inches first, and then I would turn it and cut it at one and three fourths. However, I'm only making one right now. So I'm going to cut the one and three fourths first by five so you cut that and then everything else is done for you ready for you to stamp and assemble I feel like there was something I was gonna say at one point when I was talking about this that I lost so if so, maybe it'll come back to me. This is a regular card, so fold in half, stamp and sign your name on the back. And for regular cards, the beauty of, go ahead, and this card goes this direction, go ahead and stamp and sign your name on the back first, because if you do it the wrong direction and you're like, oops, my card goes this way, you can cover all that up with the front of your card and you have a second chance on the back. Okay, grab all our pieces out. So, for this card on, by the way, I have my stamp a stack tub. You're going to get a half a pack of this Wonder of the Season ribbon combo with your kit. So, those won't be cut for you. You'll use your own ribbon. And then in the tub, of course, everything you need as usual. What do I say? Oh, yeah, I have a little tool in there for you. Um, so I'm going to, you've already seen how the tubs are, so I'm going to grab out what I need, which is this and this little spriggy image. Those are the handmade buy ones for y'all to use. Um, this one's going to say merry and bright, and then I need this other sprig. And then I need cobbler, spruce, and seafoam ink. They will have their own dimensionals right there to use, all that stuff. Okay, so bright is stained red, but we are stamping it in shaded spruce. <laughs> so always read if you're taking my classes um, so we don't mess up our ink pads. So we're going to ink this up in shaded spruce. Just tap gently, tap, tap, tap several times. And then right in the center, I'll give you the measurement of this card real quick or this cardstock real quick. There's that. Looks awesome. That is two by three and three fourths. And then this is gonna be two and a fourth by four to mat it, the cherry cobbler. And then actually nothing else gets stamped on that one. Then you, have, you will have a little scrap of Whisper White, and that is for Mary and, which we did this on the other stamp stack cards I showed. We're going to hand cut those out. And then on this piece, um, your designer paper is going to go at the bottom. This is four by five and a fourth. So it's just this one fourth inch smaller than the front of your card. This designer paper is going to go here. Then a strip of this ribbon is gonna go here. This information is important. And then you can either use this as your little guide, or where did I put that one? Oh, right here. Or you can use this piece that I cut for you out of very vanilla cardstock. Um, so you don't accidentally stamp on yours, um, to measure where to stamp the little sprigs. So we are going to stamp, and I'll show you the images a little bit better, closer up. 
this sprig image and this one shaded spruce and soft sea foam and we want them coming out the corners here of where our greeting is going to be so you may be able to just do that on your own like without a guide but I'm always paranoid I'm going to mess it up so I always like to use a guide and what you can do is get your hand on it there ink up your stamp gently get ready to stamp and then remove that and stamp. I am stamping on my ribbon. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, and then the shaded spruce one. I'm going to put a little bit lower. And overlapping it a little bit. And it'll look cute once it's coming out of there. And then on the other side, I just switched their places so this the soft sea foam one will be the first one and it's a little higher and then shaded spruce to the left of that and a little bit lower but they still overlap and that's it yeah that's all of our stamping now we just have to assemble So, <laughs> hey Stella, no problem. Terry, awesome. Thank you, Linda. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so this is just the thing. We'll throw it back in the box. Let me trim these real quick. So you just cut straight lines. It's actually easy to hand cut versus other things that maybe are not as easy. I like to leave a little bit of the white border, which uh, to me makes it easier to cut as well. So bonus there. So there's that. I will trim a piece of this ribbon. Of course, I like to be frugal when I can, um, but it does need to wrap around the back. So cut it a little longer than the front there. This is running out, but you'll get half a pack with your class fee. And then you're also going to get half a pack of the, which that's not, this the wonderful gems. This is just what I have left, but you'll get half a pack of those. Okay. Um, let me start putting this card together. So, of course, I'm using stamp and seal there. So there's that one. Let me add this designer paper to the bottom. Try to get an even border here, but we'll see. And then the ribbon. The way I attach ribbon, I know not everybody does it this way, is I usually only attach it at the back, not in the front. When I do it on the front, you can always see where my adhesive is for some reason, which might just be user error. Um, and for the second one, I usually, even though I had that where it should be, I usually verify it on the front and wrap it around. So that, then we'll do Stampin' Dimensionals. I think I need to cut a few more up here. So, I'm like struggling over here where to cut. This does, your sheet turns into like a, I don't know what, fringe or something when you cut these this way. So, I'm going to do four half dimensionals. I think I'm going to have to run and turn my little fan on. I'm uh, getting hot. <laughs> probably from making a video. And then half dimensionals on Mary and Thank you, Terry. I always, I use guides like that a lot when I'm making stuff. 
that, that needs to be stamped from under. Um, I'll just cut a scrap piece of a different color so that I don't get confused and um, use it. What else do I need here? I need some of these. Um, because the, the half pack of these are hard to split up, so in the class you can just use whatever sizes you want. But I put the small red one on the dot of the eye. I have to turn it around so I can see. And then I just put like one clear and two red on this side and then the opposite on this side. And then just mix and match your sizes. You know, like it doesn't matter. It's whatever you have available in your packet. And then we'll go one clear one, or two clear ones over here, I should say. These wonderful gems are so awesome. And our red. Those, in my opinion, they really finish it off. And I am going to add one more thing as well. But those... They kind of take the place of berries, which you could stamp from the stamp set as well. Oh, I forgot to show the stamp set. Peace and Joy. So all of the stamp -a stack cards are using Peace and Joy. And of course the dies. The class only has to cut the one piece. And everything else is die cut for you. For all those other cards that you'll be making. Yay. Um, so, the last thing I'm going to add is a double bow with this awesome gold twine that comes with the ribbon. So, I'm going to fold a piece in half and then tie a regular bow. I find that easier with twine. But, it, but I'm using two strings. So, it's double. And then I pull all the strings, you know, this, whatever these are called, down to the bottom and trim. So the double bow with twine just makes your bow a little more substantial. And then, <clears throat> cleaning up after myself over here, glue dot this down, and then we'll attach that to our card base and be done. I really like this card. And when I started trying to figure out the last card for Stamp Stack, I was stumped. And I was trying not to use too many dies simply to save Landa from having to die cut 500 things. Um, and so this card, like, any, I don't even remember exactly how it evolved, but it evolved. And then when I was done, I was like, oh, that turned out really cute. Good. <laughs> so and we'll just add this to the front. And that's it. I like it. Oops, I kind of pulled my ribbon out. I'll have to fix that later. Um, so there's that card. There's another one without the ribbon pulled out. You know which one will be your prize if you win the good one. Thank you, Carol. Very sweet. I definitely consider myself a simple stamper and not like I'm not, uh, what's the word? I don't know. Just simple. Not very fancy, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, this last card, I wanted, I really wanted to show you guys something cool that I, I know this has been out there, but that I just started using. We're not even going to use the stamps, but I'll show you the stamp set anyway. Um, but this really cool thing that I started, that I used for the first time on this project uh, and on the sampler but we're using love of leaves for my sampler class and for my scrapbook class this month so that's the one stamp set you need for this one but let me show you a sneak peek real quick this is one of the pages you're going to make and this is the Playful alphabet on our foam adhesive sheet. So that's what I'm going to show you. But um, but I did love how these pages turned out. There's a page one and a page two that you're going to make. And then you're going to make page one of Happy Thanksgiving. And page two will be in November. Plus two more Christmas pages. Um, so I ended up loving how these pages turned out. 
I believe we have a couple of these packets left, if you're interested. Um, but we're going to turn this into a card. The designer paper I used is the Gilded Autumn, and it is not um, on sale. <laughs> Basically, none of the ones with the gold foil are on sale. But, and I've used a ton of it, so mine is all, you can see these designs here, and then there's a couple more designs. I've, I've separated it into packages by design instead of just the single pack of paper, if that makes sense. Um, but it has a copper foil on the back. This is the one I used on that image I just showed you. We used this side, and I'm going to use it on the card today. Um, this paper is currently unorderable, but only for like five more days. So you can't order it for five days, but around October 19th, it will be available again. It's just on back order, or it's unorderable because it went on back order. Um, I'm going to add my dies to this package later, but here's our scrapbook box. We've got sponges, all kinds of stuff in there, um, but I don't think I will need that right now. So what I have, I created, we're not making this card at any of my events, but I just created a little packet here, a card base of crumb cake, five and a half, eight and a half, and then a four by five and a fourth berry vanilla, and then those elements that you saw on the scrapbook page. So this is the Celebration Labels dies from the designer paper. This is a brushed foil leaf cut from the stitched leaves dies and then a pre die cut happy and that is from word wishes dies which have a lot of holidays thanksgiving valentine's uh, mother's day father's day um day is separate so that's where you get valentine's day etc there's easter saint patrick's valentine's i think i said that already of course there's mary and christmas um, and we're using this for Happy Fall on my scrapbook. I mean, on my sampler, we did Happy. Oh, we did Happy Fall too, but in a different color. But we also did Give Thanks. Of course, that Thanks is from a different set of dies. Um, anyway, but I pre die cut that to save you time because I am going to die cut the letters for you. So the we have had this since our new catalog came out in June. The foam adhesive sheets. They're literally just sheets of foam. So sticky on both sides, sheets of foam. And I'm sure you can use these with other images, but Stampin' Up! has sort of uh, promoted them with the playful alphabet dies, which I love these dies. Um, not only are they awesome, but they have multiple of certain letters. So like to spell out fall, it comes with two L's, which is awesome. So it's very easy to use. Um, and I know my dies are here. Yes, these are the dies I used. Um, and I have that piece of ribbon, as you know. Which, by the way, that's the... Uh, I had to order more of this, and I had to look up the name. Uh, metallic... No, basket weave and metallic ribbon combo. Okay, so to cut out fall, the first thing I did was figure out what size I wanted to cut my paper to because I could have gone long and skinny as well. And I ended up doing a piece this size of early espresso, and it is one and a half by two. So whatever size you need, make that size. Then cut your foam a tiny bit less than that. So... Instead of one and a half by two, it's a sixteenth inch smaller. So I went to the one and a half inch mark on my cutter and brought it back a tiny bit, and then went to the two inch mark and brought it back a tiny bit. You take the sticky off the back, and I like to put this on anything lighter so I can see what I'm doing. Bring it closer to me. Um, and just try to attach this so that you do have that border all the way around, which means the sticky won't be sticky on top and then it'll stick to your
cutting pad or your die cutting machine. Okay, and then you just die cut it. Now, I haven't researched this from other demonstrators, but just in case, like without researching it, I just went ahead and ran it through three times because I didn't want to mess with it. I just wanted it to be cut good, and this is thick. So, and the magnet will not go through because that's so thick. But I still used my magnetic plate because that's what was on my machine already, and I didn't really see a point in changing it. So I'm going to put it back how it was for the last thing I cut for y'all. But you can use your regular plate, whichever you want, because it is not going to um, reach to the magnet. Okay, so you just put it on your die cutting machine. Put all your dies so that they're not overlapping each other. Again, you could use a sticky note on top of that, by the way, to hold those in place since they won't reach the magnets too thick. Um, I totally, let me flip this around. Put the handle where I can't reach it. Um, and then, so there's one, two, three times. Again, I don't even know if that's fully necessary, but that's what I did. And I did do these for everybody <laughs> for the classes. So that's pre-done, of course. And I'll show you what it looks like. If you are taking the class, you're getting this. Let me put these over here. So you'll receive this piece here. And let me flip it over. You'll see that it cut all the way through to the sheets. However, I found that these don't always come fully off when I remove the letters. That's for sure why I didn't try to poke them out for each customer. Just leave it on here for you and then it'll be easy to assemble. Okay, so I didn't fully design this card. <laughs> I figured we could figure it out as we go. So, usual fold in half, stamp and sign the back, put it aside. Um, we'll assemble this piece. So, this will be exactly how this little embellishment gets assembled on my scrapbook class. So, the leaf needs to be flat. You would think pop it up, right? But no, because otherwise your happy will be hanging off the edges and this and that. So... And then fall will be half on and half off of the leaf that's raised up. Plus fall is raised up, so we want that to be special. So I'm grabbing my silicone craft sheet. Hold on to my greeting so that I don't rip it apart. So wherever you're putting the adhesive, hold on to the other side. And you do not need to cover this whole thing with adhesive just little spots. You could also use a liquid glue um, when you have something tiny like this, but the silicone craft sheet keeps excess adhesive from getting all over your scratch paper and ruining your work surface. So happy goes at the top. That's early espresso, obviously. And then for fall, these are very sticky, but I'm gonna try not to fully, like I'm not gonna press hard in case I need to rearrange the letters. But you just put it on there, poke that little center out of the A. So this is really cool. I wish I had started using it earlier. I've been using these letters ever since they came out. This was my first time using the foam adhesive sheet. See how I'm just straightening them out and stuff. Look at that. See how raised up it is. You can't really see the white. It doesn't, to me, interfere or show when, I, when it's on the project. But if I turn it this way, of course you can. 
But it looks like what we've done in the past for that is just die cut a whole bunch of the same image and glue them all together. That gives you that effect, but with one step, basically. So cute. Um, and then the bow, just do a bunny ear bow, this mint macaron ribbon. So my thought was to either emboss this piece with an embossing folder or run a strip of the designer paper through the middle or both. But where am I? Here we go. Oh, While I'm putting everything, I'm going to cut it off screen so I can get this trash in a pile there. Um, I keep moving everything I'm using really far away from me for some reason. But I just love those, so I really wanted to show that today. So, um, there is the start of the card. Where did I put that paper? I thought maybe, actually I shouldn't use that one because I need it. I don't know. Maybe a strip of designer paper across the center. That would need to be shorter, but yeah, that'll work. So this is four by five and a fourth. So I'll just cut this to five and a fourth real quick. And then, let's see how wide this is. It's a little over, two, oh no, it's two and a half. So let me try two and a fourth. Always try bigger, like don't go with your smallest thing you think first, because if you don't like it, then you can't go trim it down a little bit. Let's go down. <laughs> so let's go to two inches. This is how I come up with my stuff, but usually I'm not good on the fly like this on videos. Um, this is a one-time deal. <laughs> um, because sometimes when I do this, when I'm working on a class, then there's like five versions that are so ugly before I get to the final one. <laughs> so yeah, it's not... I'm not skilled like that, like some people can create on the video as they go. Not me. So let me grab a bunch of embossing folders. I still think that, you know what, this will be perfect. See, this is what I usually do, just take them all out and look through, but that is that, um, what is it called? I always forget the name of it. It's got two words in it, and texture is one of them. Taste, tasteful textile, textile, tasteful textile. So you just put your paper in the folder and on your machine, this is a new 3D embossing folder. So take off the, this skinny piece that's for die cutting. Of course, you don't you need your magnetic either. This goes directly on the plate here, the platform. And then because it's a new 3D, it's number four on top. Always put the folded end where it will go into the machine first. Don't roll backwards because then the folded end is not going into the machine first. <laughs> and um, take it out and it's perfect every time. And that's a very subtle texture, but it just makes that paper not so stark. Okay, so I'll put it together real quick. So, don't forget, comment on the video so you can be entered in these cards. Share the video and comment that you shared to be entered again. And thank you for doing all that because that helps me in my business. Every time you like, comment, and share, Facebook says, oh, I'll show this to more people. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Hope you all like this card. Um, thank you, Cindy. The trick, Cindy, is I had a generic idea in my head that I thought would be pretty decent. You know, I definitely can't just be like, I'm going to use all these supplies and truly create from no idea. <laughs> so, but thank you for the compliment. Um, but I figured either just emboss this or put a strip of designer paper or do both would be good. Okay. So I did that on dimensionals. 
to make it stand out a little bit. I do like that card. That would have been a good one um, for a class as well. Super cute. I only have one because I didn't pre-make one. <laughs> yes, uh, Susan. Stampin' Up! has awesome fall stuff this year. The Love of Leaves, these dies, these stitch dies are my favorite dies we've ever sold. For fall, for leaves, I should say. My favorite leaf dies we've ever had. Um, and if you guys have seen those in my previous videos, those dies, you can cut with or without the stitching. So you can die cut out the stamped images with or without the stitching and all that stuff. So lots of options there. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks, Susan and Terry. Oh, let me bring all the cards in real quick. So we have two from my classes and one sort of from a class. It's from Scrapbook. Just um, We're making a scrapbook page instead of a card. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jewel. Good morning. Thanks, Carol, so much. Hey, Pam. See who I've missed here. Pam Simmons and Pam Belders. Hello to both of you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. Let me turn the camera up so I can say bye. I thought <laughs> this video would be shorter because I like talked about some of the class stuff during the thing, but it's the same length as always. Um, that's so funny. Thank you, Pam, very much. Can't wait to make them. Yeah, Cindy is awesome. She always, not only on mine, um, she'll see someone's video, then recreate it, then give them credit and post her card. She's awesome. Um, thanks, Terry. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Jackie and Susan. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. I hope y'all have a great day, a great week. If you would like info on any of the stuff I told you about, let me know. Um, text, Facebook message, email. And of course you can sign up for my email newsletter and all that stuff, which there'll be links for all that in the description of this video when I'm done. See y'all later. Bye.